We hear about the major bugs in RuneScape that get lots of publicity like item dupes and server crashes, crazy things like that. But there are lots of bugs or potential bugs that a few players may notice, but you don't end up hearing about. For example, on last Thanksgiving day, around 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the US, multiple people sent me tips about bugged revenant drops. They said that for a few hours, they were hitting the drop table every single kill to the point of extreme statistical improbability. One person sent me this screenshot of the loot they got from 141 Revenant imps. The loot was worth 3.65 million GP, and they didn't receive any of the rare drops that would have boosted up that value. Now, Revenant imps have an average drop value of 3.7k GP per kill if you include the rare drops, so we'd expect closer to something like 4 to 600k from 141 Revenant imps, not 3.65 mil. And as you can see, the person got 20 bracelets of Ethereum. That drop rate for imps is 1 in 200, but the screenshot suggests it was about 1 in 7. It's a similar story with the other items. Two rune plate bodies are dropped at a rate of 1 in 1500, and yet it looks like it's about 1 in 50 here. I talked to a few other people who independently had tipped me off about the same thing happening at Pyre Fiends and Hellhounds. So I messaged Jagex about it, and their response was, there's every chance that some leagues change or another might have bled through, but not something we have a clear response on or any anything that was done or undone intentionally. So what they're referring to here is the drop rate of many items changes based on player progression in the last Trailblazer League, which was happening at the time, including the rare drops for Revenants. Not the common drops we saw here, but just the rares. But it does seem like a huge coincidence that League's drop rates were changed, and then I got multiple reports of Revenant drop rates bugging in the main game. I really wonder if any other drops from other monsters in game were impacted. Let me know if you ever noticed anything. We'll get to another bug that involves a dupe right after this. Hall of Dragons is an epic fantasy four-time strategy game available cross-platform. In terms of gameplay experience, you can participate in massive battles deploying up to five legions, each of which has thousands of units, and team up with alliance members of over 40 players. There's a huge degree of strategic freedom allowing for real-time tactical decisions, so you can place forces where you see fit and set up an ambush or cut off your opponent's only means of escape. And often the best way to do that is to use the 3D terrain to your strategic advantage. The terrain isn't just for show, it's one of the most important features of the gameplay. You can use natural barriers like ravines and rock formations to your advantage by setting up your ranged units on the other side of them to barrage the enemy without taking damage, or send your flying units to cross over any terrain obstacles and turn the situation to your advantage. There's also a huge variety of equipable magic artifacts that have their own unique skills. Invisibility, speed, teleportation, healing. You can equip your heroes with an artifact that suits their abilities. The fantasy realm is filled with stunning geographical features with a 3.88 square kilometer map that you can easily zoom in and out of. The most powerful creatures in Tamaris though are the dragons dragons, and everyone wants to tame the dragons so they can conquer the land for themselves. So, download Call of Dragons to join the fantasy battles now by clicking the first link in the description and the pinned comment, or by scanning the QR code on screen. Don't forget to use the promo code CODFANTASY. We're back, and in other bug news, someone found a way to duplicate the Trailblazer Reloaded Rejuvenation Pool within a player-owned house. Literally just by using the scroll and having a garden adjacent with an empty pool space, then flipping to build mode and back again, you can now see that there's a second reloaded rejuvenation pool. These scrolls are worth 600k each right now on the GE and have a high alt value of about 15k. Good news is, you can't revert the duped pool and actually dupe the scroll, as in you can't take the scroll out of the duped pool. If you could, we'd have an item dupe on our hands and the scroll's price would have crashed in the GE. And if the wrong person found it, they would have set up a bot probably to out the scrolls within the player owned house for somewhere between 5 to 15 mil per hour, depending on how efficient they could get it. Luckily, that didn't happen, so you've never heard of this bug. Jagex commented that since the bug is harmless enough, it wasn't an immediate priority to address at the time, and I haven't checked back to see if it's patched since. Bit of a random thing, but I found this account which I'm assuming is a green dragon bot, or at least was, due to the classic granite plate body and legs and anti-fire shield, and only high melee stats. But what's strange is I found them at the Motherlode mine, mining with a bronze pickaxe even though it has 66 mining. Why is it mining? I couldn't tell you. I'd say it's for anti-ban purposes, to change up activities and try to avoid a ban, but a week later, the account hasn't gained any XP other than mining, and is now 84 mining. So maybe green dragon bots turn into runite ore mining bots. Never seen that before, but I also couldn't find any other green dragon bots mining. It's a mystery for now. Have you ever thought, what do I get for submitting a tip-off to Jagex, or even a tip-off to me, about bots? Well, sometimes you can actually make a lot of GP. 
I'll keep this person anonymous, but someone who has helped me find bots before and tipped me off to lots of them brought it to my attention that there were an insane amount of shark fishing bots in game. Technically minnow fishing bots, but same thing. I noticed raw sharks were at an all time low price of 260 GP each and did a deep dive into what was causing it and it turned out to be a great video. The result, either lots of shark bots were banned or at least the people botting it probably predicted bans to go up and stopped botting it. So how did the person profit from this? Well, it turns out they had also noticed the low price of sharks and purchased over 630,000 of them. So I uploaded my video on Ross Sharks on November 24th of 2023, and Ross Sharks were 330-ish GP at that time, already up from 260. Now they're 480 GP, over 40% higher. This person doesn't have great data on how much GP they bought the sharks for on average, but it was lower than 480. If they bought it at the lowest point, which was also around when they were sending me tip-offs, they would have already made over 100 mil. Their view though is that the shark prices were originally over 1k, and so they haven't sold just yet. They're optimistic. Big disclaimer, I thought this was just an interesting anecdote and I'm happy to forward on usernames of bots that are sent my way, but I can't guarantee I'll make a video out of it, especially if I've covered the bots in depth before. So just a general disclaimer, your merch plans may not necessarily work out and don't blame me if they don't. Jagex has many strategies to combat bots, one of which is to change the requirements of certain activities to increase the time it takes to create an account that can do that activity to prevent mass botting. Let's see if that strategy is working. Recently at the weaker variant of the Wilderness Bosses, Jagex locked the bosses behind the medium Wilderness Diaries due to the mass botting of the bosses. It was really bad. This includes some requirements like 50 Slayer, 55 Mining, etc. So it's definitely at least an annoyance to get these requirements, but the question is, did this slow down botting here? First, admittedly, I had to finish the diary, which included picking up red spider eggs in Edgeville Dungeon where I found this guy doing monkey bars. Kind of suspicious that he didn't run or teleport or say anything. He wasn't risking anything though. With the diary complete, let's check out Spindle. The first four worlds I checked didn't have a bot, but then I came across this account. XX Guts XX, 102 attack, but 79 strength in defense, which is definitely suspicious. And of course, the account has 6,500 spindle KC. Very, very likely a bot. And as I hopped, I found a bot every five or so worlds, which is definitely less frequently than before the diary's requirement update, maybe down like 50% or so. But long term, it's not the most effective strategy to keep bots out of an activity, and it's kind of annoying to real players. Also, fun fact, some of these bot scripts don't actually prey ranged if you attack with a web weaver bow, which greatly increases your DPS and chances of a kill. I actually got a Dragon 2H from this bot, which is one of Spindle's rare drops. Jagex just released their major update roadmap during the Winter Summit, which includes a lot of intriguing updates. I'm most interested in an announcement they made about their official client and its implications. First, they're adding their own HD graphics option to the official client, and I think it's gonna be pretty fantastic. I generally play using the old school graphics that we all know and love, but I'm always curious to test out new graphics options to make the game feel refreshed. These graphics are doing kind of similar things to what the graphically focused Runelite plugins do, but I do think Jagex's finished product is gonna end up better. They spent extra effort to really enhance the ambience of the game through the graphics update. Check out the fog and haze. It seems greatly improved over anything we have currently, and its subtlety is key. It creates a much better ambiance. You can see this both in snowy regions like Wintertod, some spooky regions, and also to even just enhance a hazy sunset. During the demo, they also showed off the controls for the graphics, which looks kind of similar to the controls for the Runelight HD plugin. Hopefully we'll have access to these as well so we can play around with it. Another big addition is reflection check out the water. Generally, I think it looks fantastic. They said they're gonna try to get it out in time for sailing so that when you're trying out the new skill, you can make the water look really nice. It definitely does not look old school whatsoever. A lot more like RS3, but I still think it'll be fun to switch back and forth, especially when you're trying out the new skill. Another big addition is more realistic skybox visuals. And I think the skybox runelight plugin is fantastic, but the textures available are relatively plain and it's hard to match the sky and region, which is what Jagex is trying to do here. Like check out the Mauritania skybox, it really fits in with the region. Another update of course includes bloom effects and points of light. In the demo, Jagex mentions that they'll be able to add the bloom effects for lots of use cases like spells. 
And check out this part of the demo, dynamic lighting in dungeons, which would be really interesting for boss fights. Could be a really cool mechanic, but obviously I don't think they'd actually implement that into an actual boss fight because this is just a toggle. So a boss mechanic built around it wouldn't make any sense. And it's worth mentioning since this is the official Jagex client, these features will be available on mobile too which is pretty impressive. The other thing that was briefly mentioned within the HD section that Jagex is adding on is the official client plugin API, which also includes a new plugin hub, meaning we'll be able to use a lot of Runelight plugins on the official client and also create our own plugins. And I'm pretty sure Jagex will be approving all of these. So we have an extra layer of security when using plugins. The implication I see here, which is what a lot of people have been kind of anticipating for a long time, is that Runelight is such a great product and so popular that Jagex has just been constantly working to recreate it on a client Jagex controls. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you enjoy a lot of my videos, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys soon.